What's up good people? In this video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 mistakes to avoid when selling on Amazon FBA. So let's get right to it. So number one on the list is not adding value and not differentiating your product so it dominates a market. So let's say you use Jungle Scout and you find, let's use Jessica's lighters again. You find that the lighters are doing really well on Amazon. You see that, you know, people are selling lighters like crazy. Instead of you just going to Alibaba and ordering a, a generic lighter, you need to do some research and figure out a way to add value to your lighter so it stands out from the competition and it dominates the market. You know, you don't just wanna be another seller selling lighters and just kinda of blend in with the crowd. You wanna figure out some type of something that can add value to this lighter that'll make your product kill it or, you know, over the competition. So one thing that you could do for a lighter, for example, is, you know, maybe the person that's using a lighter also <clears throat> needs a case, you know, to carry their cigarettes in or to carry whatever they smoke, you know, whatever they smoke. Um, so maybe you could bundle that and now create a Jessica's lighter and case bundle. You know, that's adding value to the marketplace. You see that the lighters are already selling, but now you have to think about how I can add value to the marketplace. And number two on the list is ordering too much inventory. So when you're first launching a product, you don't want to go balls to the wall and order 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 units of a product just because you really believe in your heart that it's gonna sell. Because reality is that you don't know if it's gonna sell or not. I mean, we do our product research to lower our risk and to make educated decisions um, on which products to invest. Uh, but at the end of the day, you are still taking on the risk of a certain number of units. So you don't want, you wanna lower your risk as much as possible. At the same time, you wanna have enough inventory so that if they do begin selling, or let's say when they do begin selling, um, you have enough time for production and shipping to replenish that inventory before you run out. So initially, uh, a Chinese manufacturer will, will usually require like a 500 to 1,000 minimum order quantity based on the product. Um, I usually like to try to negotiate even lower than that, try to get them around 250 to 300. Um, I at least want a month's worth of inventory uh, when I'm first starting out, um, a, a conservative month's worth of inventory. Number three on the list is not checking historical data when you're doing your product research. So yeah, you may see that there are a lot of people, a lot of sellers selling a particular item, and you also may see that there's a lot of people searching for that type of product. but. This may be temporary. You wanna make sure that before you invest money, you're not investing money in a seasonal product, <clears throat> a product that only sells for two or three months out the year. So you check that by checking Keepa, um, which is a Google Chrome extension, and you also check that by using Google Trends. And Google Trends and Keepa will kinda of give you a snapshot of uh, the history of this product and where it's going. Number four on the list, selling prohibited products, selling restricted products. So before you invest money in, uh, in launching your product, uh, just click the link below and it'll show you a list of the prohibited products that are not allowed to be sold on Amazon. Just to make sure that you don't invest $1,500 to $2,000 um, only to just lose it, I mean, just to, to burn it. I mean, I guess you could liquidate it on eBay or liquidate it at Craigslist, but why, why do you want to go through that? Just go with the product that is, that is, uh, that's allowed to be sold on Amazon and your life will be a lot easier. Number five on the list, and one of my favorites, is selling a product you're passionate about versus what the data tells you. Okay, so yeah, you may be passionate about mittens, and yeah, you wanna sell the cutest mittens on Amazon, um, you know, but if you do your research and you find out that that market for mittens is too competitive, and there's no real opportunity for you to position yourself in the market to dominate, you don't need to sell mittens. You know, you need to go and sell pillowcases where it's less competitive, um, where you have an opportunity to really succeed. So with Amazon FBA in this marketplace, forget about passion and, and focus on data. It's all about the data. It's all about cross-checking references and making sure that the product that you are going to invest in um, has great search volume, has high demand, has low competition. And if you're passionate about it, that's great. If not, as long as all those other things add up, then you're good. The six on the list is not having a review email follow-up campaign for your past customers to encourage reviews. So when you're first starting out on Amazon, there's only two things that matter, sales and reviews. That's the only thing that matters because that's gonna spike the algorithm and help your product rank on the first page for whatever search term you're going after. So you need to be doing your best your best effort for, uh, for generating reviews. And you can do that by using a, a software such as Feedback Genius or Jungle Scout that'll email your customers 
and ask them for reviews in a, you know, in a polite way. Um, and not only just ask them for reviews, but just check up to see how they enjoyed the product. See if they have any feedback that can help you uh, modify your product to, to become better. Um, but really you want to have an email system uh, set up as soon as you launch um, because like I said, the, the biggest thing that matters, the, the biggest two things that matter when you're first launching is sales and reviews and you need to be killing it on reviews. Number seven on the list is a lack of focus on mastering the skill. All right, and so that's, this is a big thing because um, when I was five, five, six years ago, I would jump around from thing to thing, try this. I would just keep trying a bunch of different things. And yeah, that taught me a bunch of different, that taught me a lot and I, I learned a lot along the way. Uh, but it wasn't until I was at my job and I was just fed up working a job and I wanted to travel. I'm watching all of these travel vlogs <laughs> while I'm at my job being distracted. And you know, it hit me and I was like, you know what, I need to just hone in and master one skill and get really, really good at it. You know, so I took Amazon FBA really, really seriously. I didn't pay attention to any other projects, even if it looked really nice, even if the opportunity looked great. I was like, nope, I'm focusing on Amazon FBA. And all of my hours were spent researching, how, you know, working with my mentor, uh, just doing product research, you know, just researching. Even if I already had a product, I was just researching just so I can get in the habit of learning how to look for products, learning what looks good, learning what doesn't look good. And you can't go that deep on a certain skill if you're hopping from thing to thing. So number seven is definitely a very, very important uh, mistake to avoid is, is don't hop around to the, you know, to the next opportunity, you know, to the shiny objects. Just focus on one thing, focus on Amazon FBA, become really good at it, and I'm telling you, the rest is history. All right, number eight on the list is not launching aggressively. I work with both new and established sellers, and when I log into, a lot of times when I log into a new seller's account and they're just launching a product, their advertising campaign may only be at like five or $10 a day, you know, to push their product out there. And remember what I said earlier, like when you're first starting out, the two biggest things that matter are sales and reviews. So you need to have your review campaign going and you also need to be aggressive as hell with your advertising. Um, you need to be doing, you know, at least start off with 50 to $100 a day. Now you may not spend all of that, uh, but it's so important that you get your product out in front of as many people as possible when you're first launching, because that's gonna dictate how well you rank uh, for that particular keyword and how fast you rank. If you come out the gate slow, it's gonna tell Amazon like, well, maybe people just don't like this product, you know, and maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just not uh, relevant to what they're searching for. Um, but if you come out the gate strong with heavy reviews and also with a strong advertising campaign, that'll help build that momentum and it'll help you rank overall. So start out aggressive and then kind of digress if you need to, but go out aggressive, balls to the wall when you first start out with your advertising. And number nine on the list is paying 100% of your inventory costs up front to the factory. So this is a big, big no-no because when you're first starting out on Amazon, you're not gonna have a huge budget to really impress or become a priority to uh, these huge factories in China. You're gonna be pretty low on the totem pole. So if you give them all of the money for their, for their, you know, to produce your product, you know, they don't really have any motivation to, to finish on time, especially because it's only a small amount. You already gave them all of your 100%. You already gave them all of your money and they'll get to you when they get to you. I, I made this mistake uh, with one of my first businesses uh, uh, selling gym shoes called Jimmy Kicks. I made that mistake back then, you guys. So, and we actually had to go over to China back then and kind of, you know, tell them, hey, y'all, we need this shit. We need this shit done, so don't make that mistake, you guys. So what I like to do is usually 30% 30, uh, 30 up front to begin production, and then 70% upon successful inspection. So what I would do is, I, depending on the product, I would hire a third-party inspection agency to visit the factory, to make sure everything is boxed up properly, to make sure that the boxes uh, won't, get, in order to make sure the boxes won't get damaged when they're shipped, to do a random pick inspection, to randomly pick a few units out of the boxes to make sure that the units are good and up to par, um, and then I'll pay the 70% after I see an inspection report from my third-party inspector. So that's what you want to do, 30% up front, 70% after it's inspected and ready to ship. Most factories will, uh, will be okay with that, even as a new seller. And number 10 on the list is paying via wire transfer or Western Union on your first order. You guys, you have to protect this investment at all costs, guys. You have to use a payment method that is trackable, uh, that, you know, that offers you some type of protection. 
Uh, for a brand new order, I like to use PayPal. Um, if they say, uh, no, we don't accept PayPal, tell them that you're gonna pay with through family and friends on PayPal, and that way they avoid the fee. Um, you can also pay uh, via Alibaba through Trade Assurance, uh, which also does give you some protection as well over your, over your investment. Just don't pay, just don't wire anyone any money, even if they demand it. Say, hey, I'm sorry, but we only pay with new manufacturers via credit card, via PayPal, you know, via uh, Alibaba Trade Assurance. If you, can't, if you can't do that, I'm sorry, you can't have my business and just move on to the next guy. So those are the top 10 mistakes to avoid, guys. If you have a mistake that I didn't mention, comment below. I wanna hear some of the mistakes that you guys have made. I've made hundreds of mistakes in this business, y'all, so I know all about them, uh, but I hope that uh, some of our other uh, viewers can also benefit from your experiences down in the comment section below. Also, for more videos, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share this video. I'll keep posting these videos as long as you guys keep showing the love. And I'll see y'all guys. <laughs> see you guys on the next one. Peace.